Alrighty, uh, I think I think we're live. I think we're live. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Uh, I have been uh, trying really hard to figure out how to light and camera this space, and let me tell you, this angle, this is not it. Uh, so, but this is what we're working with tonight as we sort of continue to figure things out. Obviously, we turned over the shop and just trying to make it work now. Um. Refreshing. So tonight we are looking at the new Scorpion Mask from Mortal Kombat, the upcoming movie this month. Uh, I've just been really enamored with the way it looks. I found a lot of really good reference images for this so far. Uh, and I just love the banding across the face. And it's got all this cool damage on it in the trailer. So I thought this would be something really fun to uh, try to template out. So, good evening, Melvin. <laughs> good evening. I'm actually going to reach across here real quick and grab some paper we've got my trusty head form out uh, you don't need a head form I just like it I think he is aesthetic and also he can be really fun to use for all sorts of stuff uh, craft related honestly so let's let's use him a little bit for reference here because we've got a pretty sharp nose on this one uh, and there's a pretty intense groove uh, on the outer edge of this thing. So I thought, just kind of, just kind of go for it. Just kind of go for it. I'll start with some aluminum foil right on the face. Right to the face. Wow. There we go. Uh, so we're going to be doing sort of a combination of many different things tonight. You know, there's going to be some, some freehand... Uh, but we're also going to be looking at, oh dear, whoops, that's okay. Uh, we're also going to be looking at doing some actual pattern drafting. So I figure this is as good a place as any to start. We'll just kind of stick this part onto the face there. Make sure this aluminum foil isn't going anywhere. We'll probably do another layer of this, honestly, just because this stuff can be a little flimsy, especially when we just start right on the face there. And we're really trying to work this into the grooves of the face because I want to see where like the features of the face are before I start covering them. Because uh, I want to make sure this is actually going to line up pretty well because this mask actually covers up, uh, shall we say, a, a surprising amount of the face. Uh, what I mean by that, it's, it's a lot deeper than you think. Actually, I wonder, can I add an image? I'm going to try and add an image to this. Hang on. This is a reference image I found of a really cool modeler I found on Cult 3D. It looks like Grigori. It looks like a Grint. It looks like a Russian modeler. Uh, but I am going to see if I can add this to the stream because I think it would be very useful in, in terms of uh, you guys fully understanding what it is that's going on here. Scorpion. Hey, there he is. That's that's too big. Too big. This this scorpion. Let me. I'm gonna like stick him over here in the corner. This is the jankiest we've been in some time. <laughs> okay, uh, so you can kind of see what I'm I'm working towards here. Uh, so scorpion over there. It, it covers a lot more of the face than you think, because like it, on the surface of it, it just looks like a half mask starts here, but it actually creeps pretty far up in the eye here, and it actually goes all the way down to the jaw. It's not it's not ending here. It ends way back there. Um, so to that end, we're we're wanting to make sure I actually get this on the right part of the face, as it were, because otherwise we're going to be in trouble. Uh, the one thing that I will note is that this thing definitely doesn't have a very intense nose ridge. It definitely starts up here, comes all the way out to there, and then comes down. Uh, and that's going to be super important, especially since the actual bridge, you can see the bridge of the nose itself sort of peaks forward, this, this skull-like shape. So we're going to build this up and out a little bit. Uh, I'm going to fold up some aluminum foil. Gosh, I hope this isn't the worst sound ever. What is his mask for? 
Do you mean like, why does he wear a mask? If you're asking about the lore of Mortal Kombat, you're going to be upset with me because I don't actually know. And I'm sorry, but I don't. Um, let's see here. Kind of tape this into place. Start building up the face. So it's sort of flush with the nose there. And then we're actually going to continue to build this up and out. Why does he wear it? I actually don't know. I actually don't know. Why? Google! Why? <laughs> I just typed Google. Why does Scorpion wear a mask? It's part of their identities to wear a mask. It represents how their lives have been. I guess it's like part of their uniform. Uh, I think the aesthetic's just really cool, if I'm being perfectly honest. Let's see here. Let me bring up my images again. Bring them back. <laughs> Let's go across here, fold that back up and in, and start to build out the shape of the cheek here. And I'm being kind of fast and loose with this here because we're actually going to do another layer over this to really define the last layer of templates here. Let's see. Okay, yep, that looks pretty good to me. Slap it into place. Stick it down with some masking tape. Do we care? No. As long as it yields a good final result, right? The ends here justify these awful, awful means. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's start, we'll make another really long band here. There we go. Tape this on. And basically we're done. Like, <laughs> this is this is the whole the whole thing. We're all done. Uh, the good news is we also only really need one half of this because ultimately we're only making a half mask. Now this does have some implications for the way we're going to do this shape because there's kind of a, a hard edge here where it's supposed to meet it's supposed to meet the cheekbone as it were let's sort of dip that down here and it stays pretty wide in the middle so let's go there up above the cheekbone a little bit actually tape it down tape it down tape it down i'm an artist <laughs> here we go Okay, so just cram some extra tin foil into that shape here. Hopefully it'll kind of smooth over. We are starting to approach a point with this initial sculpt. Yo, Diabolical Props! Glad you could make it. I wanted to poke you on this, because I know normally I, I you're busy on Tuesdays, and I don't always do a Thursday stream. Uh, so, let's see here. Alright, we're starting to get somewhere with the shape. Okay, so, now that we've got a big ball of masking tape and hope, let's stick a little bit more, a little bit more 
onto the jaw here, and then we'll kind of drape the whole thing. Okay, here we go. Harsh jawline, harsh jawline. Here we go. Okay, so now I'll kind of flip this over. Because you can see on this side, it's just some masking tape. But on this side, it's just some masking tape, which is great. <laughs> because more, more than anything, I'm actually just really excited about the fact that this is sort of working. <laughs> Let's start. I'm going to kind of bridge some of this gap here with some masking tape, sort of smooth over those shapes. Make sure everything is actually stuck down. This is a very destructive form of art, I'm aware, but I think we will find that when we are done, we have a much, much cooler thing than we started with. Here we go. Stick this down right here. Oh man, I tell you, I need this this kind of manic creative energy right now. It has been it's been a hell of a day. I just feel the need to create too much. And that's Oh, thanks. This head form was actually a gift to me by my aunt uh some time ago. Back when I was a little more of a wee lass lad, meh, whatever, um, and uh, you know she wanted to be very supportive of me one Christmas, uh, and she sent me, she gave me a head form. She actually also gave me a couple of other things. Uh, chief among them, I think, is actually this. It's a variable temp soldering iron, which I recently used to do a bunch of stuff. Why was my day bad? Ow. <laughs> People. People. Not you people. You people rock. And I'm really glad to be here now. But like people. Why why did your day ever suck, people? Just people, man. Okay. So this is kind of the final layer we've got going on here. And the idea is that now we can sort of crudely draw our shapes directly onto the head form once I put some masking tape on here. Just go through and start start covering things, adding tape over it so we've got something we can draw on. And yeah, now just lots of lots of small stuff today. Y'all know how it is. You try to get things done, you're putting fires out. And then occasionally somebody just kind of frapes us in and is... Maybe it's a bad mood, maybe it's a bad day. Not to mention it's been raining a lot lately. You don't like people either? <laughs> who Who is to be blamed? Oh, it's... it's People are generally pretty awesome, pretty great. And just occasionally... There's a day. The day where you look at it and... Think maybe... Maybe you gotta make some small changes just because. I don't know. My work right now definitely has just been a lot gnarlier because of like the way life is. And now working at a credit union is not so bad, but occasionally there are days. There are days. Let's see. Okay. So now, gotten just about. All the way around this half mask here. I want to be a little assertive with the tape just because I want to make sure that I don't miss any spots, that it's all going to stay together when I try to pull everything apart. And that's important. We don't want this to come apart. We, we, we spent time on this now. Well, we spent about 15 minutes. We've already got the rough. Rough, 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 rough shape 
of the mask. Now let's start defining it. Uh, I'm going to start in a lighter marker just because, you know, I don't want to... Well, rather, I want to be able to go back over my deep, deep mistakes. Thanks, guys. I I really appreciate it. Yeah, y'all y'all am a Disney prisoners. Brit prisoners. <laughs> uh, foam armors and Disney prisoners alike. Okay, let's see here. So this actually goes pretty far up the nose. I think I might have actually skimped a little bit on this. Let's see. Add a little bit more tape right there. There we go. Uh, so it comes up pretty pretty high. Let's go back. We want to get the whole jaw, so we're going to come back to like here. Really try to get a nice square jawline coming all the way around there until we hit the break and the jaw up here. And that will break across. Actually, I think I might need to go back a little bit further. Yikes. Okay, that's okay. Break the jawline up there. This is probably going to need to come down to like there. The, the, there. Okay. Okay, so then it comes pretty far up the nose for a half mask. see here I go across and then this does straighten out so I'll probably have to fix this in the paper pattern uh, but then we're gonna divide down the center of this thing hmm we'll see we'll see about that that's that kind of rough there but I'm, I'm seeing it I'm seeing happiness is positive <laughs> here we go let's see here I I'm seeing a lot of the shapes I want to see already right here uh, but I think what I'm gonna need to do is actually show the dimension here is that that's gonna be more important here we go okay so this is where there's a subtle break in the shape all the way across here. Once that break is done, this break comes across here. Basically goes straight across the bridge of the nose like that. Oh yeah, this works. This works very well. Okay, so at this point, I think most of the detail we're probably gonna wanna... What do you enjoy more, freehand or Hepicura? It's a great question. Great question. The short answer is, I like them both for a lot of different things. I like Pepicura a lot for all the reasons you'd imagine. Like, for instance, oh, side note, uh, I sharpen the hell out of my razor blades because I'm cheap. There we go. There we go. Uh... I, I like both for very different reasons. I, I like Pepicura for all the reasons you might imagine. You know, it's it's very easy to make repeatable results. Um, it's easy to share Pepicura, because once I've got the Pepicura and I use the patterns, I don't then need to scan the patterns back into my computer and, you know, manipulate them or something. They're already patterns. <laughs> I can share them with you guys already. Um... So on some level, Pepicure is nice because I don't have to, like, do a bunch of extra work in order to bring more people into it. Uh, but on the other hand, freehand can be very fun because sometimes you're just fighting Pepicure so bad. Truly, just so badly in the name of trying to do, like, a specific thing. And that's rough. That is hard. Here we go. All right. All right. We're gonna free it. We're gonna free it from the from the bonds of the head form. Is it perfect? No. Is it a heckin' great start? I hope so. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. 
I think I think we're we're at a good start here. We got we got the shape. There it is. Okay, so now we're gonna refine this by doing a couple things to it. We're going to throw him no. Throw him away. New head form. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to cut this apart with some scissors. Not going to use good scissors because don't need to use the good scissors right now. Let's see. I am going to say let's chop right up the center bit of this line. So we've got sort of this inner cheek bit that turns into the jawline, and that'll have some more detail on it. Uh, and then we've got, you know, the way I see it, there's under the bridge of the nose and over the bridge of the nose from there. So there's like three basic shapes to this, and then there's a lot of detail that goes on the, that shape. Yeah, that's, that's how I think I want to handle it. There we go. Should make Ben Affleck's Batman helmet. Did you manage to finish your? I am actually just about to finish it. <laughs> I'm really excited because it's hard. It's like Facebook doesn't let me share photos of like uh, replica guns anymore. And the really the only thing I was finishing on that was the replica guns, which you know. Uh, but uh, the replica gun is almost done. I was gonna probably have a cameo briefly, um, and then uh, it's go. It's about to go out. Uh, but uh, I'm excited because we're going to start doing some other things that I've been wanting to work on for a while in, in and amongst a couple of, you know, smaller commission style things. Um, what am I missing here? Okay, let's see. Uh, I actually have made Ben Affleck's Batman cowl before. Oh, it was a long time ago. Uh, I really liked it. I actually have a, a set of patterns for it on my Etsy store because it's a ton of fun. Where's my pencils? Where the heck are my pencils? Oh, there they are. Okay, so... Ooh, got a pen here, and I think... Am I crazy? I'm crazy. Here we go. So, my plan of attack, then, is basically... Transfer this to some printer paper. Just some printer paper. Like, you can use other crazier pieces of paper. Use, like, butcher paper, especially for big armor pieces. I like using butcher paper to try and uh, keep bigger pieces together, because I think that that's ultimately going to give you better pieces and whatnot. Uh, but uh, for smaller stuff like this, it can be nice to keep it on printer paper. Plus, if you make your patterns for something on printer paper, then you know when you go to like digitize them later if you want to, they're going to fit on a piece of printer paper. Which is great, because, you know, again, ease of use. Okay, so we're going to crudely transfer this to a piece of paper, and then the fun starts. That's where we start going hog wild. Now, I think, in the name of love, we are going to actually attempt to crudely make this template as it is. is oh, it cracked. That's no good. Was it? Is it? Are we talking about like um, the helmet that cracked? Did your did your helmet crack from uh uh? Well, what am I? What am I trying to say? Uh, are we? Are you talking about physical cracks? Like you dropped it, it cracked, or like you bent it and it cracked, or are you talking about cracks like chemical cracks, like it's like it's eking apart and whatnot. There we go. Yeah, see, that's what I'm, that's diabolical. You're, you're right on the money here. I'm trying to figure out the exact same thing. Like, what, what's the problem here? Is this a chemical problem? Is it a physical problem? There we go. Let's grab this. This will help with sizing too. I'll determine if I've gone, you know, too far up the face on one side or not enough in another direction. 
Like maybe it's too short overall, just because the head form's not quite the same as me. Helmets foam flexing out. Yeah, so that's not something you're going to be able to uh, stop from happening to some degree. Uh, because, uh, you know, flexing is not the way of spray paints, as it were. Uh, I use a lot of spray paints in my stuff, but you, you kind of have to, you know, gauge that. Is it going to move a lot? Like this, this has a very light coat of uh, gray, like a, like a satin gray on it. Uh, but it's mostly just the Plasti Dip and a lot of like hand paints, like a, like wax finishes, so that it still has some spring to it. Even after all this time, like I can still kind of squish it together, and it doesn't wrinkle a whole lot, but it's not going to be able to flex super hard. Uh, to do that, you're going to need to do things like creature cast rubbers, like, like foam rubbers. That's the only way you're going to be able to achieve stuff like that. Now, let's see here. Ooh, I just blinded myself. I am going to grab some of this six millimeter foam. Uh, this is actually Art Mines. I've talked a little bit about this before on the channel. Uh, actually, all of the store, like the big box stores, like Michael's and Hobby Lobby, I actually really like Art Mines foam. I know it's a little softer than some people like, uh, but I actually, I really like that you're able to do a lot of wonky things, for, things with it in, in terms of like, uh, the technical way the foam goes together. Come on. Here we go. Uh, is there any other paint that is metal colored and replaces the powdered graphite? Ick. Ugh. It's like ASMR, but angry. Um, let's see here. Um, let me think about that. So uh, you're looking for a paint. You're looking for a paint that replaces uh, the chrome-like finish of graphite powder. They exist. Uh, Aluma Luster is one of them. Aluma Luster is kind of considered the standard by which aluminum-style paints uh are judged uh graphite powder's got a really nice shine to it uh which is why i use it but aluma luster is great it's just kind of expensive whereas this thing of graphite powder which i barely used barely used any of is like 24 dollars and i've done a whole suit and i still have a ton left i use it periodically for other things because of that let's see here um and here, here's where uh, the camera placement's getting kind of wonky here, because all I'm doing right now is just kind of crudely tracing out these first round of very initial shaping patterns. Because once we've got these down, I can start to, you know, manipulate them. I just need to know how it's coming together, because I want to make sure that we're not wildly off in terms of the shape here. Um, otherwise, you know, a good silver, silver spray paint will get you pretty far. Will it get you a chrome finish? No, but is, is graphite powder chrome? I would say not. Um, what's my opinion of plaid effects? I actually really like plaid effects. I think the plaid effects, uh, gunmetal actually has a very similar, similar, not the same, but similar luster to uh, like a, gr uh, a graphite powder over black uh, gloss spray paint. Um, it is not the same. It is not nearly as impressive, but I think it's got the same sort of energy, if that makes sense. Uh, although it will come out looking very dark in photos, whereas graphite powder comes out looking really, really bright in photos. That's kind of the main difference between them there, in, in my opinion, in, in my humble opinion. Um, uh, I do, I, I was going to say, I can't speak to a lot of the plaid effects paints. I think a lot of plaid effects paints actually might be 
might be a little overblown, and I don't mean that in a, a mean way. I think that I think that they're pretty good paints, but I think that there's a lot of good, much cheaper acrylic out there. I will say the one thing I think Plaid effects paints are really bringing to light for a lot of people is the fact that most people don't mix their paints at all. A lot of people will just take the color, and there's nothing wrong with just taking the color, but even even if you are 100% happy with the color of the paint you're using, I would always recommend adding a little bit of water to it just so that it flows a little bit better when you're, you know, painting things together. Okay, so this is sort of kind of going to just be a straight cut around this right here. Yeah. So over the cheek, the cheek piece itself is pretty much just flat cut. You got two of those. Let's see. Bam, two cheek pieces. Boom. Then we're going to cut the inner groove of the cheek a slight angle, and for that I'm actually going to try and grab my X-Acto knife. It, it'll come out of the bin. Oh my god. Here we go. Let's see here. Mm, 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 and, and to obtain the graphite color, can you use black acrylic and combine it with chromo color to obtain a graphite color? What? What's chromo color? I'm not, I'm not sure I know what you're saying. I think I think you're trying to ask if you can just add graphite powder powder to like black like like paint. And no, that's not really how it works. Graphite powder is I've got some really cool live stream videos that we did of doing the Mando chrome, but basically you need a really glossy finish, like a really smooth finish, and then after you've got that smooth finish you then sort of buff the powder onto it. And it's that buffing process that creates a really, a really shiny, smooth surface. You can't just, uh, it's not just the graphite powder. The graphite powder is, you know, a big part of that, but the graphite powder itself is not very shiny. Again, I'll, I'll kind of open this up. You can see it's quite dull in the can, but you can see on the lid where it gets tossed around and kind of buffed around, there's some spots in there that are really, really shiny. And that, uh-oh, sorry, it gets on everything. That's very dangerous. Well, not dangerous so much as just unclean. Uh, but it's, it's not something you can just add. You know, it's not like a silver powder. It's not like, um, oh, God, what is it? Uh, it's not like cold casting where you add, like, pow like metal resins, excuse me, metal powders to resin. That's not what this is. This is something else. This is, this is something else. Okay, so I want to preface this by saying that this first one is going to look vaguely, 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 vaguely like Scorpion's Mask. And that's okay. That's kind of the point. The point here is that we're, we're starting this journey. Um, we'll either do a little bit more off screen or, I don't know, maybe this will be next week's live stream too, since it's not coming out just yet. Let's see here. Go ahead and cut out the part that goes over the bridge of the nose here. Yes, this is a very, very fun shot of me with my back to the camera doing all the things. <laughs> Lord, I swear we're gonna we're gonna get a better workaround for this. I don't know. Maybe I should put the camera like right there. You'll see the window, but like at least you'll see what I'm doing. Lord. Okay, here we go. Over the top. What will crack less, using spray paint can? Or acrylics, or does it depend on the plastic and others that I'm not familiar with? Hello, Demon Tech Digital. Hello, um, <clears throat> Melina. I I will say that acrylic will will uh will not crack as much, 
but you won't always get the smoothest finish. That's not to say you can't get a smooth finish in acrylic, but it's worth noting that if you're not super heavy with your spray paint, you can get a spray paint base and use a lot of acrylics and it'll stay pretty bouncy. Like this is, this is HD foam and I, it's got a lot of flex to it. It's structured. I wouldn't recommend trying to bend it in half, like like really bend it over, but it, it'll it'll flex and it'll bend, and it'll especially for this one because it's got the leather look to it. It'll kind of develop some wrinkles, and that's a good thing. Uh, but it's um, it, it's not the kind of thing where it's going to turn into. It's not going to stay like this, where you can just kind of bend it over and over. Have you seen Razor's Project Hazel Corona Mask? I have not yet. Uh, but I have a nagging suspicion I'm going to have to check it out, just based on a name like that. Yeah, let's grab some contact cement here. I'm going to need a new brush. This brush is kind of worn out. New brush, and we'll get our heat gun down to expedite this process. All right, we're really getting somewhere. I think we're going to have something interesting to look at by the end of this live stream, which is always fun. Always fun to have something fun to look at. Um, I think, let me think, Punish Props has a really good video about trying to achieve chrome on foam, uh, which if you're really interested in that, I, I would highly recommend go checking that out. Uh, because I think he does a really good job of kind of explaining the full range of what's possible because you can get parts chromed you know you can actually do chrome on foam it's expensive it's very toxic and it's not going to be super flexible question mark you know like you can and for, to that end you know you can do foam builds where you basically add a whole bunch of chemicals to it until it's a rigid piece now, these are options that are available to us. Uh, but I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to go. I think it's kind of ignoring some of the best parts about foam, where it is it is super flexible. Um, and so we kind of give up a certain amount of uh, finish, if you will, in the name of that. It's this. If I have an armor, I want to have a lot of flex, what should I use for paint? Okay. So, like I said, these, these parts all have quite a good amount of flex in them. Uh, like, they, there's a lot of give. They're very, very nice in that way. And this is foam. And this is a very, very high... I'm going to call this a pretty high-quality finish. Um, and to that end, what I really do... What I really recommend is as few layers of paint as possible a lot of layers of rubber so it's quite durable and a quality outer finish clear finish that will flex good finishes for like gloss include like floor gloss this pledge Ooh, little bubbles uh, otherwise very very quick coats of other things mod podge in and of itself can be a clear coat if you use it fine enough um, oh, that's really cool. Oh, thank you, Demon Tech Digital. Thank you, thank you. Um, but I, I think that if you're looking for a really, a really flexible finish, the fewer coats of things you can put on it, the better. Like, the closer you can just get to the foam itself. I, honestly, I know some people who build... Because you can get colored versions of all this stuff. Like, you can get red. And, I like, I've seen people do, like, full Iron Man builds where it's just the color of foam. And so when you glue it together, it's together. Or you're done. Uh, and it's a super flexible finish. Again, it kind of goes back to that, is it super glossy? Is it super high quality? Maybe not. But it is going to be super functional. He is super functional. I should have been a bard. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Okay, so let's put the bridge of the nose together here. Yeah, yeah. Again, remember, we're looking for, like, the basic shape here. If this is not perfect, that's okay. Uh, and then, just so that I don't lose the shape here, let's grab this here. Ooh. I might have angled that a little more intensely than I meant. Oh, no, no, no. That's actually good because I want to heat form that out so that it, it actually curves up a little bit. This is good. This is good. Oh, yeah. I actually really like that. There we go. Oh, wow. Yeah. This shape has gotten really good. You want to make a mask, but it's really confusing and overwhelming when you try to find a template. Well, I might be able to help. What kind of uh, what kind of mask are you trying to make? I'm gonna try and get these cheek pieces in before we run out of time here. Remember, folks, give your glue a good stir before you start, or you get chunks like this. I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. That's why this is a problem. <laughs> Lord. Oh wow, that does not wanna. Oh, weird. Oh, no, no, that's right. I'm getting my angles mixed up here. Let's see. See, you want to make a mask. It's really confusing. I have a specific idea in mind, but I don't know if I can even come close to pulling it off. I like the Mortal Kombat masks, okay? But I don't like the bulkiness on the sides from the beveling. Okay. Is Pledge the same as Clear Coat Varnish? Uh... Short answer is I don't really know. I know it's meant to be I know it's meant to be floor gloss, so it's just very durable. Varnish, from what I know, is durable, but in the sense that it's a durable finish, whereas pledge is meant to be walked on. And I think that that says something about <laughs> I don't know what. Let me see here. I honestly don't know. I'll I'll it'll, it'll be my first one. I'm afraid to waste materials. Okay. So one thing I will say is while I don't want to uh, put aside the fact that some people have limited money, some people have limited resources, that's totally fine. One thing that, uh, especially when I was starting out, I got super wigged out about wasting material, which is part of the reason I got really good at Pepe Cura, because I got really good at figuring out whether or not something was going to work. But um, uh once I started being a lot more uh, willing to throw some material at the wall until things stick, I started being able to produce a lot more quality content because rather than getting really hung up on trying to fix something that was very broken, I would just redo the thing that needed to be redone. And that's an important lesson to learn, I think. Yeah, ple pledges, pledges, it's specific, this one in particular, the, the gloss I'm using and talking about in particular is actually um, floor gloss, it's Revive It floor gloss, it's for like wood, um, and it's got a long lasting shine, uh, which I can attest to, it does have a long lasting shine, I like the shine, <laughs> I don't mind the taste, <laughs> uh, but uh, d tech, d d demon, demon tech digital, talk to me here, what's going on? Your wife is a crafter and tells me not to worry about waste because at the end of the day it's just foam. Well, she's she's right. She is right. Especially, and this is this is going to sound flippant again to people who you know do have limited resources. That's a that's a thing. People just don't necessarily have a ton of money to throw at things. Um, but in terms of like the front end commitment. Foam is really comparatively quite cheap. Like, if I were to actually break down the cost of this build so far, um, including this heat gun, let's think. $5 box cutter, because it came with a bunch of blades. $11 of foam. $6 of glue. Um, so 11 11 22 
Um, let's say if you want to get one of these brushes, because you only need one to build it technically, it's 50 cents, so 22.50. You know, so, and this gun is 25. So we're le still less than $50 here. And I think that we're getting a lot for it, if I'm being totally honest. Um, and that's still with enough, that's still with a whole roll of material left over. And all that glue. If I want to do this again, I can just do this again, and it's not more cost at that point. There we go. Uh, but what is, what is the helmet you're looking for? Or the mask you're looking for? Is it a specific mask? Are you trying to make something from scratch? Like, that's really cool. There we go, let's fit this cheek piece in. Kind of worm the edges together first so that I can make sure this actually fits together. I don't know, sometimes sometimes you go from 3D to 2D to 3D again and you just wind up with something that doesn't quite look right. And that's that's always rough, but you know, there you are, buddy. Okay, that's pretty good. You know, weirdly, I think this is actually kind of squashed vertically. I think it needs to be taller, uh, at least in the lower half of the face. I think that, I think that we've, we've foreshortened it a bit, and that was not the right move. And this is why we make sort of a test piece like this. Here we go. 60 bucks a roll. Landon, where, where are you at? Lord, dude. More than such. You know, if you're just looking to try and create your own mask, uh, I would recommend checking out. We have a, we actually have a build video on the channel where we made three masks from scratch. I wonder if there one access. There is one pretty accessible. Hang on. Oh dear, I've lost my microphone. There we go. There is one pretty accessible up here. Uh, this was one of the Oni masks from Ghost of Tsushima. Um, it's kind of warped out. This is actually, this is actually, um, Plat FX. This is that Plat FX gunmetal I was talking about. Like, it, you can see, it's got a pretty good shine to it. It's not, it's nowhere near the same shine, but it, it's, it is nice. Um, but, uh, that video on the channel, uh, shows how to make three different masks. Um, and they're pretty, it shows how to make templates there too, which is part of the fun. Um, let's see. Have I tried electroplating foam? Electroplating. Electro are you talking about like L wire, like L lighting, or are you talking about something that I? What the hell is electroplating? Oh God. Um. I don't think you would be able to electroplate foam. Because it's non-conductive. I think that's a big part of it, right? Like, you could put a conductive paint on it, but I feel like that finish would be really delicate. Oh, I don't know. Oh, God. I might need to try. Okay, so here, here's what we got. Here's, here's where we wound up. 50 minutes, start to finish. And I know that we were nowhere near, like, finishing this thing. But I think that we've actually got a pretty good shape. I think, I think that we need to we need to definitely make it a little taller overall. <laughs> and I might actually be able to cheat that a little bit with heat. One thing that one thing I actually don't like to do a whole lot with with foam is it actually does stretch a bit. And I try to avoid that because those results can be very uh, haphazard and non-repeatable. But just for the sake of seeing if this is kind of close to where it needs to be, let's stretch it vertically. Put it back on. I think that I think that looks pretty good. I'm 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 like reasonably happy with the overall shape. Maybe maybe we make it a little taller and bring the bring these edges in a little bit just so this this very pointed chin shape comes out a bit more because it is very flat on the front i think we've nailed that i think we've nailed this sort of cheek shape here and the way it curves back in there's more edges to be had but i think i think this is a really good place to stop for tonight uh because you know 
got to leave them wanting more. Uh, I really do like it, though. I think I think this sits more or less in the right place, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. A very successful live stream. And look at it. Like, that was, that was all, like, tinfoil and masking tape, like, 20 minutes ago. Hot damn. Hot damn. The foam would melt from elect. Here's the thing: I don't think the foam would melt from electroplating. Like, how hot does electroplating get? Because, like I said, it, it's not very conductive, so there's no reason it would melt. How hot does electroplating get? Here we go. This is not 60 degrees. 60 degrees. Oh wait, wait, hang on. Various plating solutions could get anywhere from 60 to 160. I don't know, because, like, hear me out, hear me out, because this variable temp will actually give us some idea of what, what that means here, because I think, yeah, I don't usually tend to see noticeable, noticeable melting in the foam at 200 degrees, which is the lowest temperature, ow, ow, which is the lowest temperature on this thing, so I think you could, hypothetically, I think you could maybe electroplate foam am i gonna have to electroplate foam now god damn it you guys suck <laughs> you guys give me these ideas yeah yeah no i know that the metals are placed in the fluid like that uh if your weight fluctuates a lot tips on making parts like thigh and chest honestly make them big make them big or if you can if you can find a way to do it, one of my favorite things to do is to uh, add, not Velcro to things, but elastic. So, let's say you've got a static thigh piece all the way around. But, there's a place where there would be a natural seam, but it's kind of hidden. Especially on the inner side of the thigh. What you do is you split it along that. You put elastic on the insides so that it can kind of stretch along that. And that way it's also very easy to sort of slip on. And you can, of course, adjust it as needed. Uh, but elastic's really your friend when it comes to wanting to make things, especially foam, which is a fairly static material, uh, a lot more stretchy in terms of uh, the way it holds together. But uh, thanks for coming on this journey, guys. Uh, I think next week we'll try to maybe go through and add a bunch of detail to this, because that would be really fun, because then we could basically just paint it. It wouldn't even be that big of a thing. Um, but thanks so much for chilling out. Uh, if you have more questions, if you have more ideas, if you have build suggestions, check out our Discord. There's a Discord link down below in the doobly-doo. I'm on there a lot. Lots of people are actually on there a lot. So if you have questions, somebody can answer it. I can answer it. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, there's the, the community's kind of grown over there. It is. Uh, thanks so much to everybody who came out tonight. This has been a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons real quick. My patrons help support these builds. If you yourself would like to become a patron, it's like three bucks a month and you get a bunch of extra templates. Extras. <laughs> uh, but Benjamin, Laura, Ruben, Matt G, Jennifer Zayer, Pandal Say, K Snake, and of course Austin of AJ Plays Piano. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and thank you all again for joining me on this week. Uh, I've been Jaden here for Foam Armory. Please, as always, take care.